Hi everybody, Matt Bernie or Mike Beer taking a look at the Sunday formulator race of the day. It's the big one up at Woodbine. It is the Queen's Plate, one million dollars for three-year-olds going a mile and a quarter on the Tapita surface. Let's take a look at this field. I want to remind everybody, head on over to the Race of the Day page. You can get your free Formulator Pass performances and follow along with us as we go right through in post position order. Million dollar purse on the line. The number one channel maker, and Bill Mott. Bill Mott, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, trying to win his first Queen's Plate. And he's got a pretty good chance with channel maker in here. Uh, this is a horse most recently ran in the Marine. No disgrace to a lose to a talented horse like Super Tap It. Yeah. He's very, very logical. Yeah, got to believe he's going to be one of the favorites in this race come post time. We'll see how it all shakes out in that regard. But I, I feel like he's a big contender in this race. I guess for me, the one, I thought he ran well last time. Um, he took a shot at Super Tap. It turned away, but he was a good second. The one thing for me is, you know, how far does he want to go? Does the mile and a quarter really help this horse? I wonder if the mile and a quarter really helps him. Um, but he's got a great post. He can get a good trip in this race. There are a lot of things that I think that would point you to Channel Maker in the, in the Queen's Plate. Well, and that's kind of a bigger thing, too. I feel like we've just kind of gotten into the mind frame now where, you know, we're past Derby season, past Preakness, past Belmont, where yeah. we're stamina, immediately we go back to the mile, mile, and the 16th races where it's not as important. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, it comes right back into play where how many of these horses truly want 10 furlongs as opposed to some of them that are going to be better eight and a half nine that's exactly right i mean i think it's really going to come into play in this race too because i think that there's just handicaps as such a wide open race and when you're starting to try to cut contenders and make decisions on how you're going to play the race i mean distance is going to play a big part in it i think the two guy caballero is a horse that won the plate trial coming into this that's the local prep the local three-year-old prep these are all three-year-olds obviously but it was one of those things you and i've talked about it you've yeah. got a number of horses exiting that race and I think it's a, a very logical and understandable position to take that you have saying that you just don't like the race. Yeah, that's not my favorite race, that's for sure. I don't I don't like it. I don't I'm not gonna be too hard on Guy Caballero because I just feel like I mean he was twenty to one in that race. He's probably gonna be a similar price on Sunday in this race. So I'm not gonna be too hard on him. I just it's not the kind of race that when I went back and watched it where I felt like Got to have one of those horses out of the plate. I just didn't think it was a good race. Catherine Day Phillips is a good conditioner with this formulator fact. You know, take it with a grain of salt, especially with a horse that's going to be a big, big number. Yeah. Past five years, winner last out, non-graded stakes races, one for 17 with a 190 ROI. The number three is the morning line favorite, and she happens to be a filly against the boys. That is Holy Helena for Jimmy Jerkins. Stronic Stable, she made her synthetic debut in the Woodbine Oaks most recently. She ripped my heart out because I like Mythical Mission that day. She came right <laughs> over the top and just completely dusted her. This is a very talented horse. You saw her run in New York here yeah. a couple of times. She was good, but she didn't really scream superstar. Yeah. She got up there. She looked like a million dollars. Yeah, she ran well last time. She got. I thought she got a really good trip in the race, but you know what? She did what she was supposed to do with a good trip, and she won easily, and she improved her figure again. And I suppose you could look at her and feel like, you know, she'll stretch out. I don't think the, the distance has to be a big deal for her. Um, but she also feels like a short price in a Queen's Plate where I, I'm not so sure that he, listen, I know the figure says she's fastest on the way in. I'm not even so sure if she just runs her wood by oak, she wins this race. Does she deserve to be the favorite? Um, not necessarily, regardless of price, does she yeah. deserve to be the favorite? No, I, I'm going to say no. I'm kind of with you. I, I think she's a really nice horse. I'm not going to be surprised at all if she wins. Yeah. As you may mention, this yeah. is a really difficult race to go over. I yeah. just... I don't think she's got some giant edge on anybody yeah, else in I, here. I agree with that. The Four Spirit of Caledon is a horse that you just look at it on paper and you say, unfortunately, you are really, really up against it. Yeah, it's the kind of race where I feel like you want to keep an open mind um, out about a lot of horses. <laughs> he was... He was pretty tough to keep an open mind about. The other filly in this spot is the number five in flexibility for Chad Brown. Javier Castellano comes up and takes them out here. This horse also exits the Woodbine Oaks, and while she was well beaten by Holy Helena, it's worth noting on the far turn, she got shuffled behind the tiring pace setter pretty badly, yep. and she didn't come on at the end with a little bit of run. She lost some position in that race. That's certainly true. I don't think she was, you know, I don't think the seven length difference between, between her and the winner um, is necessarily accurate, but it's probably closer to maybe four or five. I don't yep. think she was winning anyway. Um, Again, it's a wide open race. You got to just sort of make decisions somewhere. One of the decisions I made was I'm not taking the Phillies in here. The six and the seven breaking right next to each other are two Mark Cassie entrants in this spot. The six is King in his court. The seven is State of Honor. We'll start with King in his court. This is a horse that he he's very clearly a synthetic horse. Yeah. He's not very good on the turf. He's certainly not very good on the dirt. Right. Synthetic is where he thrives. He worked out a really, really nice trip last time out in the play trial, and he wasn't good enough. He worked out a perfect trip, too, back in the Wando, yes. and it worked out for him. 
I'm starting to wonder if this is what he is, where he just gets these perfect trips. Yeah. But at the same time, it, right now he's not fast enough. Yeah, true enough. And, you know, trips will go a long way. So you give him a little bit of credit yeah. for that. But, you know, they're only going to take you so far. And if you're going to keep betting horses like him at shorter price, he's 5-1 to one in the morning line for this race, and just keep expecting him to, good to get a good trip in a race, that's great until he doesn't get one. Right. And then you see what happens with him. And, you know, to me, I just keep looking at him and think, you know, how much better does it get for this horse from here? I, I just don't think he's that good, Matt. We've seen him 13 yeah. times now. I just don't think he's that good. And as one of the shorter prices in the race, I'm way against him. I suppose you could make the same argument against the number seven, State of Honor. But when we talk about State of Honor, we have to take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector because the pace projector believes that State of Honor will be on the lead. I have no reason to think that he won't be on the yeah. lead considering he set the pace in the Kentucky Derby. He set the pace most recently in the plate trial. The Derby, I'm not holding that against him. The plate trial, I'm certainly going to hold <laughs> against him because what was the excuse for packing it in? Yeah, I mean, he just, I mean, you could almost watch that replay that race back and sort of see him shortening his stride yeah. the last 16th of a mile. So, like, he just couldn't get the distance. And now he's going to, you know, take on even more distance in this race. I just don't see how it works out for him. I think he's the better horse of the Cassie pair. More talented, I think it's him. And he will be on the lead in this race. I just don't think he wants to go this far. I I'm waiting for the turn back. I think he could be a very nice one-turn horse, even on dirt, because he ran very well down in Florida leading up to the Kentucky yeah, Derby. I just... Don't think he wants any part of this distance. I agree. The number eight is Malibu Secret. We talked about this horse a little bit. Malcolm Pierce sends him out. Alan Garcia with the mount. First time blinkers. This is a horse that has some ability. Uh, you just watch his replays. You can see that. Yeah. The concern now is how far does he want to go, and why are the blinkers coming on into the biggest race of his life? Yeah, I got to admit, I don't love the equipment change for this horse um, coming into the Queen's Plate, but everything else about him I like. I like all three of his races. I thought he ran fine in the Marine last time. He wasn't going to win. He couldn't quite get to the one-two finishers, but I think they're both good horses. And he took a shot at it. He was wide. He made a run, outfinished by them, but didn't stop trying. Um, I There's more upside with this horse. He has the pedigree definitely on the damn side to keep going yep. on in distance. There are things to like about him at 20 to 1, and I'm using him. The 9 is mega gray. This is a horse that, again, a little bit slow on paper. The connection's a little bit on the lower profile side. You add blinkers for the first time. I suppose maybe he could work out a good trip. I just don't yeah. know if he's this good. Yeah, quite, that's, he's one of the horses who really does have to improve to win here. But again, he's only run four times. Um, his races are okay, and they're getting better as time goes on. How big a jump can he take in the Queen's Plate? We talked about how you want to have an open mind. I am afraid that the 10 Vaughn fits into the same category as the horse we talked about earlier, that mm. on paper, just hard to make. Yeah, it just it feels like they're running him in the wrong race. The 11 Aurora Way is a fascinating study coming into this race. Yeah. Considering all of the horses that we've already talked about, and we've still got a couple more to discuss, Discuss. He started one time. He broke his maiden on debut at thirteen to one, thirteen and a half to one, and he did it like a good thing. Yeah, he was. I I agree with you. I, he was really impressive. When I mean, he got a good trip off that pace, but boy, did he come with a big run around the turn and he just crushed that field. That was a really impressive debut. Um, for, I don't know what kind of price you're going to get him on, on Sunday, and I don't think I would take too short of a price on him on yeah. Sunday. And I don't know if necessarily the Queen's Plate. Um, is the right race for him at this time of his career after only one start. But I'll tell you this. Tell me I can have one horse going forward, and it's this horse. I yeah. think he's good, and it's going to be very interesting to see what he does. You just look at the way that he moves. He looks like yeah. he's already professional. And, okay, he was under a little bit of a ride on the far turn, but, boy, he extended down the lane, and he galloped out by an absolute mile. We've got a negative formulator fact for Stuart Simon. I don't want to hold this against this horse, though. Just take it into consideration. Yeah. Again, at a short number, past five years, maiden winner last out route, one for 17, 53 cent ROI. Keep in mind, that's maiden winner last out route, and it's not the Queen's Plate that they're coming into immediately, <laughs> exactly. all 17 of them. So something to keep in mind yep. in the back of your head. But boy, he was very impressive breaking his maiden. The 12 is Tizzy Slam for Roger Atfield. Uh, this is a horse as a two-year-old. He had really good form. You look at some of the company that he was facing. There's a part of me that wonders, has he just not improved as mm -hmm. a three-year-old? But then there's also the part of me that wants to be kind and say, his past two races haven't worked out ideally. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. We talked about the plate trial already. I don't like that race, and I don't want horses out of it. But if I'm taking a horse out of it, I'm taking Tizzle Slim. Because I think he was the only one that you can go back and watch the race and feel like, if things had gone differently for him, he could have finished a lot closer in that race. And he's a price in this race. So he's the one out of that race that I'll be using. The other three I'm not using. The 13, watch me strut. Another one for Catherine Day Phillips. Uh, most recently was a winner, had a pretty good pace to run at. Going to be coming from the back of the pack, yeah. a little bit slow on paper. Yeah, a little bit too slow. Has to improve last time, the first time they stretched him out. Has to improve again. Um, 
But he does sort of, when you watch his races, he just sort of looks like one of those horses who would just go all day. I mean, he was just getting warmed up. It looked like at yep. the end of that last race, and he closed those horses down. He's a huge price in here, probably asking too much for him to win. But I'm going to use him underneath in this race and try and make some money with him at a big price, because I think he will stay at the end. Major race for three-year-olds up in Canada Sunday, the formulator race today. It's the Queen's Plate. Let's take a look at our selections in this spot. Mike, you're going to go with Aurora Way. You're going to go with, uh, of, of all the horses in here, even the lightly raced ones, yeah. this one seems to be the one that has the most room for improvement. Yeah, he's got a huge upside, this horse. It's not usually my kind of horse, but there's just really nobody else that I that I really want in this race. I won't take too short a price on him, but he's the horse I'll make my top pick in this race. I'm going to use him mostly with the 8 Malibu Secret yep. and with uh, the horse that you put on top, Tizzle Slam. Tizzle Slam, I just kind of feel like in the plate trial, he never really had a chance to run until it was too late. And in the Wando, uh, maybe a little bit of an overconfident ride from Eureka Rosa mm. da Silva, but at the same time, when you're sitting on a, a three to five shot, yeah. you're probably supposed to ride him that way. And I just kind of feel like if you reverse the trips between he and King in his court, maybe he's the one that gets the job done by a length or a length and a half. So I'll go with Tizza Slam. Mike will go with Aurora Way in the Sunday Formulator race of the day. It is the $1 million Queen's Plate for three year olds up at Woodbine. If you're playing the entire Queen's Plate card, we've got to pick four up that'll be on later on this afternoon. Check out DRF Bets. All sorts of good deals for you. Be a VIP for a week, particularly if you are a new subscriber. Start with a $300 bonus. DRFBets.com slash VIP. Scheduled post time for race number 10 Sunday. The Queen's Plate, 536 Eastern. Best of luck.